Hormones. Hormones. I was assigned female at birth. I was assigned male at birth. I was 11 years old when I first started bleeding. I remember my body changing, growing. It scared me. I attempted to take my own life. I banished parts of myself and hid them away. We created it specifically for the exhibition and, um, and we kind of thought that we didn't want to make yet another, you know, sort of thing about trans people complaining or about hating their bodies and all of these things which we see very often. Um, which you know a lot of trans people go through definitely, but we just wanted to make something a bit, a bit different from that. Eventually, you have to realize that all these things that make you trans. My Adam's apple. My top surgery scars. My big hands. My hair. My voice. Are the things that make us beautiful. But it's yeah, it was just about showing trans people sort of talking about their bodies and talking about surgeries or hormones from a sort of a different perspective. Um, it was really great, as I was saying, having to have an opportunity to create something uh, specifically uh, for this shout out about hormones and, and what that means to us. Um, so hopefully it's, it's informative but also a bit abstract as well. I think we recycled some of the footage uh, later on for a film called uh, just This Is What Non-Binary Looks Like and that was as a result of a uh, hashtag that went really viral after we, uh, we chatted to uh, a really uh, a great trans advocate called Piers Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was really good. It's, it's, it's great that, that good stuff comes out of terrible things, and, uh, and, and that hashtag was definitely one of those things. As audiences, we like to see, quote, drama. We like to see uh, a character navigate a, quote, obstacle. I mean, that is what motivates drama. That is the bedrock of drama is that somebody is, you know, metaphorically walking along the street and they, they encounter a brick wall and they somehow have to navigate that brick wall and get to the other side of it. That's, that is drama, right? It's been going on since time immemorial. And uh, apparently the, the, the greatest drama, the greatest obstacle of all is, is finding that your, your uh, gender identity conflicts with the, uh, sort of the identity that you were assigned at birth. Um, and to anybody who's not trans, you know, that, that's, that would be the, the story of, oh, how the hell do you do that? <laughs> wow, really? You, you, you actually, you did what, you, you climbed over the wall? You went, you, you knocked the wall down, you went, what, you dug a tunnel underneath the wall? What, how did you get to the other side? Wow, really? And of course for us, um, I mean, I, I, I can't speak for Fox and Al. I can only speak for myself, but um, if I can if I pursue this rather tedious analogy, yes, there was a brick wall, and yes, I navigated it, and yes, I got to the other side, and yes, thank you very much. Fifteen years later, I'm delighted to be at Lincoln University doing this talk. Um, but for the audience, they want to see how we got, how I got around that brick wall, and I do understand that. It's just that for me, as the trans person who's navigated that, it, it does get a bit tiring. So, I mean, I, I can see both sides, and um, I, I maybe rather lightly I commented earlier, you know, I am just an actor, you know, people give me lines to say, and I say them. I don't generally make this stuff up. I have got a million novels and stories and movies that I want to make in my head, but I haven't got the wherewithal and the hooks bar as these guys to actually um, sit down and crank them, crank them out, you know. Um, I wish I did. So we're, we're thinking today about the, the representation of trans people in the media. Was there a particular um, film or television program or, or news story that made a strong impression on you uh, early in your life? I mean, for me, uh, for my transition, it was YouTube videos that helped me to, to realise who I was. I've got, yeah, I can see nods from people. I mean, that, that meant so much to be able to see people's uh, 
you know, where they're, 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 where they come from, where they're heading, and so on. It was more useful for my mum as well to be able to see that. Yeah. Um, was there a film that, that really kind of did it for you? Well, there wasn't uh, a lot of positive films. That was the thing when I was growing up. There wasn't, you know, you didn't see trans characters as people doing their own thing. It was sort of they were plot devices, or they were supposed to be. It was supposed to be a funny thing, or it was supposed to be disgusting, or they were even depicted as murderers, and uh, and that was like the reason why they were so evil. And uh, it was just a. Uh, yeah, I don't remember ever seeing anything until in recent years where trans people were actually depicted in a, in a sort of positive way. And, uh, and even in some of the films where they are depicted in a positive way, it's always the same narrative and they are there just as the trans person and that's all they are in the show. And it sort of evolves around their transness and their whole plot is just, you know, that they're trans. But there's definitely good things as well that have you know, been positive. I mean, I'm from Iceland, so UK-based shows aren't really, you know, uh, as popular in Iceland as American stuff is. So, for example, Boy Meets Girl was never shown in uh, in Iceland, which I think it should have been, because it's one of those shows where, you know, you actually see trans people in a much more positive light. And, uh, yeah, but I just remember seeing stuff like Ace Ventura, where he spends about five minutes just obsessively cleaning himself after he finds out he likes a trans woman. And you know, when you constantly see this over and over again in different shows on TV, you start to sort of internalize a certain certain type of shame, and you feel like, well, it's just how everybody's gonna gonna see me. And yeah, uh, Boys Don't Cry. Uh, if anybody's seen it, um, about a, tr a trans guy in the Midwest in the States, um, based on a true story of Brandon Tina. Absolutely heartbreaking uh, movie. Um, and I, I defy anybody to see that film and not be absolutely, uh, you know, moved to tears. Um, what it, the moment in that film, spoiler alert, was when, uh, one of the, uh, one of the episodes when Brandon was played by Hilary Swank, um, a, a cisgender female, of which more later, I'm sure. Um, but when uh, Brandon was being uh, assaulted, and the the girl, uh, the girlfriend, played by Chloe Savini, I believe, um, she she had a line. She screamed out, "Leave him alone!" To the guys who were beating uh, beating up Brandon, and I just remember that sort of cry of rage and pain that she. Uh, she didn't realise at first that Brandon was trans, or we don't know for sure in the in, in the in the audience. But there was certainly a sense that um, she fell for the person rather than the genitals and the you know the, the gender identity as such. And I, I was really moved by that that moment. So I'm sorry if I've spoiled that for anybody who hasn't seen it. But um, it's it was a great moment. The other one was uh, nothing at all whatsoever to do with uh, being trans, actually. It was uh, a movie called Touching the Void. I don't know if anybody's ever seen that movie, uh, based on a true story about uh, a mountaineering ex expedition that went terribly, terribly, terribly wrong. Um, but again, it was a story of um, actually survival and fighting back against the odds and being really, really... I don't know what language I can use in this forum. Um, are we are we 18 plus? It's going to a wider environment beyond these walls. So, really in a tight corner. Let's put it that way. Um, and uh, and yet, uh, Joe Simpson, that the the, the character that the that's, you know the, the person um, but portrayed by an actor, you know, got out of that tight corner again. Spoiler alert. Sorry, folks. But um, again, you know, it just struck me that if that person could dig that deep within themselves and uh, claw their way back to uh, the surface, literally, um, there was kind of hope, and that's really what gave me hope. But I've been in situations where I've been at events or I've been doing things, and there are people who strongly disagree uh, with who I am or what I do, but. What I just do is I just explain my own experience and that's all I can do and if they disagree with that then I don't really care. I've just come to the point of, uh, you know, people usually see if somebody is that angry, as you see, usually people can detect that anger and people see that the anger isn't logical 
So as we did with Piers Morgan, we just sort of remained calm and we just kept saying what we wanted to say and what we wanted to get across. And, uh, and in those situations, you are more speaking to the people watching rather than you're actually speaking to the person mm. against you. So I think it's all about, you know, remaining that calmness and just showing people that it's just about being you. And, uh, but, you know, being trans isn't up for debate. You know, we, sh we shouldn't have to fight for our right to exist uh, because you know, trans right, rights are human rights. You know, we have there are protections for us. You know, mm -hmm. um, by the UN and uh, you know different countries yeah, too. Yeah, just don't get bogged down into these debates. I mean, especially on Twitter, if somebody starts arguing with me, I'm just you know, trans people are real, and that's it. I don't really have to discuss this any further. I mean, from my own experience, uh, whether that's conversation, and I will be generous and use that 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 word. Um, the conversation, uh, you know, I, I, I try and listen and I, I counter the arguments and defend myself and um, anybody who shares uh, similarities with me um, as best I can. And uh, I, I, I just sort of feel that people are so, they get angry. You know, and I kind of don't understand that. So when I when I ask them why they're angry, they get, just seem to get ang angrier. <laughs> and, um, There's a, uh, an organization called Onward Media, and they run uh, a project called All About Trans, and that is a, a project that sort of centers around positive representation of trans people in the media and beyond. And uh, and they do these things which they call interactions, which is where they go into into media outlets or TV stations. And they bring a group of trans people, about between 10 and 20 people, and then they bring people who work in those places. They just bring them together for a friendly conversation about their lives, who they are, what they do. And just making these sort of friendly interactions and events actually go such a long way. Because people often get put off by going to a formal lecture or having a training or doing all these things. And it's sort of about framing it as a as a conversation and just reaching people on a human level. And I think that's what All About Trans does really well. Yeah. And they've actually impacted people on ITV and, and, and you know, in a lot of places. Yeah, I think the, the, the more visible we are and the more that uh, trans characters are seen in soaps and everyday dramas, um, the, the better, y you know. And I find as an actor that I'm actually playing parts which may or may not be trans, you know. I, you know, I, I had a small part last year, and I've just recently filmed a couple more episodes of the same character in Doctors, the popular daytime continuing drama. Um, and uh, you know, I asked the uh, when I first played the parts last year, I said, well, "Is she trans?" And they said. No, I don't think so. Is she trans? No, no, I don't think she's trans. No, 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 she's not. They haven't told me whether there's going to be a developing storyline where she's, you know, uh, she comes out or, or so. But I mean, I'm known to be a, a trans person, so I sort of assumed that the character was trans, but it was sort of completely oblivious. Nothing in the storyline at all suggested that anything to do with her gender identity. She was just the vice chancellor of uh, a fictional university and she sort of uh, busted a few balls uh, which was, she was a great character to play you know um, but you know so if people if the audience sees a trans person playing that sort of part mm -hmm. um, you know when boy meets girl came out i remember i had a i had a letter from somebody saying um they loved the show blah 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 they had a classic water cooler moment after one episode and this uh, this guy in this office sort of came up to the, the people at the water cooler and said, oh yeah, well, I saw that show last night. Isn't it a pity, the, shame on the BBC for not casting a trans person in that role. And they all said, um, uh, Rebecca Root is trans, that's, you know, and he was like, oh really? I mean, okay, so, you know, I had a, I had a wonderful makeup artist who uh, made me look, made me look uh, great. But um, yeah, it's, it, it, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting question, and I've waffled on again, sorry. You know, there are stories, um, I don't know how sort of legit they are, but you know, of people who have transitions, but only partially perhaps, and uh, they might be serving in a male prison for sexual offences um, against cisgender females, and then they might 
transition or go some way towards that and then say, actually, I feel uh, threatened by being in the male, uh, male, male estate. I need to be housed in the female estate. And some people might feel, you know, perhaps uncomfortable with that. They will but, always assess that, though. And yeah. I mean, no one go ahead. I mean, there are always policies, in the UK at least, I've looked into this a lot actually, and uh, there is a policy in place so that anybody who wants to be housed in a, in a women's prison has to go through an assessment, regardless of whether they're cis or trans or whoever they are, and if you are seen as a threat to, to other inmates, I mean, even if you're seen as a threat to other men in prison, you will be placed in a higher security facility. So, I mean, people often like to trivialize this as if it's just men pretending to be women who abuse women and then they want to go into the women's prison so they can be with all the women and abuse them but that's not really how it works and i recently saw research which showed that trans uh, and just people in prison actually face the most abuse from officers and from you know people who work in the prison rather than other inmates so i think you know we often see this sort of glossed idea of it and we don't really look deep into it there have been a few uh, trans women who have been openly saying that they want to be involved in politics, such as uh, Sophie Cook, uh, Lily Madigan, and a number of other people. And I think uh, oh, this has always comes down to the, the all women shortlist as well. I mean, I think it's uh, I think trans women definitely need to be involved in politics. And there have been trans women in different countries that have actually been parliament members, such as in uh, in Poland and uh, Uruguay and a lot of random places as well. Um, I mean, it's going to happen, ultimately, and inevitably there's going to be a trans woman or a trans person in general that's going to make it to Parliament, but it's a rigged game, and, uh, and this whole women's shortlist is just so banal, because why would a man pretend to be a trans woman when it's so much easier for him to get in Parliament as a man? <laughs> I just don't understand what he would possibly gain from trying to be a trans woman who, literally, there hasn't ever been a trans woman who's made it to Parliament because of lack of opportunities, stigma, and so on. So there will be one, definitely. Uh, when I think of uh, non-binary people uh, in uh, like activists, I guess, uh, I, I can think of Asia K. Dillon that won uh, an award, was it last year, for uh, it was like a gender neutral award or something? No, so I, they basically, they because there isn't a gender neutral award, they had to choose whether they want to be nominated as in the male or the female category, and they choose the male category, I think. So it's in, uh, I mean, is that non-binary? I don't know. I guess that tells us everything we need to know. You know, yeah. non-binary people aren't even included in anything, and uh, and this is actually a, an interesting topic as well because the reason why it was divided into female and male was because the men were winning all the awards when it was just the same category. Uh, so I mean, it's a difficult uh, thing to navigate uh, to try to find that thing, and we never see non-binary characters and. If we do, they're always this sort of weird, almost alien type of person. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely non-binary uh, artists out there. And uh, and I guess it's about if we don't see ourselves represented, we create the space ourselves. And I think that's what a lot of more people do. And that's one of that's the reasons why, yeah. why I came out originally, because I didn't see myself represented and I thought, you know, there needs to be something and there needs to be someone. And uh, I never planned to be an activist or to be a spokesperson for anything, but it sort of ended up doing it because, you know, I wanted to see a certain thing represented. And I think non-binary is becoming more of a thing in the mainstream media now. And I think in the next few years, we're going to see a lot more people. I mean, there's a, an amazing performance artist called Travis uh, Albanza, I think, and they are, yeah, they're a performance artist, and I think there's a lot more of those type of people who are sort of coming out of, you know, coming out and being able to be themselves. And I think there's a lot of people who aren't out as non-binary, even though they might already have a platform and they're a bit afraid to do it, but I think we're finally reaching to the point where people are able to say that. There was a, a, a singer recently who did it who was known, I don't remember their name, but they came out, uh, Everybody perceived them as a gay man, but they came out as a, a non-binary person. Simon, something, uh, is a singer in the UK. But I think it's slowly starting to happen, and I'm seeing it happen more and more. Um, I'd like to thank our speakers again, uh, Fox and Rebecca, for coming here today. Um, if you'd like to join me in welcoming and thanking them. Thank you.